The only battleship capsizes documented on film during World War I is the sinking of the Austro-Hungarian battleship SMS Zent Istvan on June 10, 1918. But it was not heavy fire from another battleship's large-caliber naval guns that sank the Zent Istvan. Then what's the mystery behind it? Want to know more? Then stay tuned to the video. The reason behind it is that it only took two fatal torpedo strikes for her to drop to the bottom of the Adriatic Sea, where she was sunk by tiny Italian motorboats. Why a single torpedo can split a ship's keel in two without ever hitting it, and why submarine-launched torpedoes have a wire connection is not what you might believe. Torpedoes were dangerous because of more than just a lack of ship protection below the waterline. It was thought that underwater explosions would shake warships to their core. When the above water portion of a ship is directly struck, the resulting explosion could puncture the hull or deck. The damage, regardless of its severity, is limited to the area of impact and is unlikely to sink the ship. A single underwater explosion, on the other hand, impacts the vessel multiple times and in multiple ways. When a torpedo strikes a ship's hull below the waterline, the explosion creates a gas bubble that expands. The walls of this gas bubble expand faster than the speed of sound in water, creating a shockwave. This shockwave delivers the initial impact that can puncture the ship's hull, similar to an above-water strike. A powerful quake could also cause hundreds of minor leaks throughout the ship, eventually leading to its demise. This is why new warships undergo full ship shock tests. A nearby undersea explosive charge is detonated as part of the ship's sea trials. These tests will jolt the ship which may occasionally result in damage. The purpose of shock experiments is to certify the operational survivability of new ships after exposure to underwater shock. However, if stress tests can harm warships, what about fish, whales, and other marine life? The Navy takes the safety and security of marine mammals very seriously, so all testing is done in a way that does not interfere with the diverse movement patterns of marine species. Furthermore, if sea mammals are spotted nearby, the experiment must be postponed. But let's be honest, some fish will rise to the surface. A massive column of water surges high into the sky almost simultaneously with the explosion and the subsequent shockwave. This is known as the bubble jet effect, and while it has little effect on ships during shock trials, it is arguably the most lethal feature of torpedo attacks, especially when detonated beneath a ship's keel. Remember the underwater gas bubble that the explosion created? This bubble will quickly rise to the surface, lifting anything in its path, including the ship's hull. The hull is built to withstand downward pressure rather than upward pressure. This indicates that the upward pressure exerted by the bubble will put extreme strain on the hull. The bubble then bursts and the hull sinks into the void in the water, causing a sagging effect. As if that weren't enough, the bursting of the bubble causes water to fly upward dealing a severe blow to an already compromised hull. Torpedoes sink ships in this manner. Torpedo boats posed such a significant threat to capital ships that a new class of warships, torpedo boat destroyers, was developed to counter them. Later, the term was shortened to destroyers. Torpedoes were, ironically, one of the first weapons carried by destroyers. Obviously, this cable is not a necessary component of the torpedo. Because the target characteristics can be pre-programmed while the torpedo is still in the submarine's launch tube. However, once the torpedo has left the submarine, these characteristics cannot be changed. Even if wireless communications worked underwater over long distances, the signal would reveal the torpedo's location. However, with the command wire attached, there is a live data link that allows operators to change the torpedo's target, depth, and other settings. If the data link is lost, the torpedo will continue to follow its last command and approach the target. However, how long is this cable? It is actually as long as the torpedo's classified effective range. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our incredible videos. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.